All right, looks like we're gathering a pretty nice crowd right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the recording here tonight for this weekly preparation. Give me just a second, guys. <clears throat> Kim, do you watch the news? No. All right, perfect. Um, I do ask out of just to, you know, everyone else's, um, so everyone else can hear. If anyone does have their mic on, please mute it for the time being until we do have questions open. Um, just that way everyone can hear. But first, uh, let me just introduce myself for some of those that are new here. My name is James. I'm one of the analysts here. Um, at the Alpha Stocks Lab, uh, we go over these weekly, kind of the time frame, looking at um, SPY, QQQ, the major Tesla, NVIDIA, etc. And any stocks you guys want me to look at here on the weekly basis. Um, starting this on Sunday nights, uh, and you know, basically just getting ready for the week uh, or the week to come, based on the previous week's analysis. So, obviously, a lot of this stuff will probably change by morning time, but for the most part. Generally speaking, the trend, the overall trend right now, at least on SPY, uh, is to the upside. Yeah. Um, weekly wise, you know, we just have this continuation. We've been continuing for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, it's, it's probably about due for a pullback. However, that does not mean that this can't just continue to go. So as of right now, overall trend is looking to the upside. We're trending over our 20 EMA, trending over our 60 EMA on the weekly, definitely well above our 20 weekly EMA. Uh, so, you know, we are reaching this, this level up here at about 457, 458, or getting close to it, I should say. Last week, end of last week, you did go ahead and test that 456, I believe it was. Um, so we're getting close to where we could potentially see a top, um, if not already right where we're at. So weekly wise looking good. Uh, if we even zoom out here, since we are coming up on the end of November here, I think this will be our last week of November. On Thurs Thursday will be the last day. So very strong candle as of right now, at least according to uh, the candle. Now, if we really look at this volume wise, we've had actually a pretty light November uh, for the most part, so definitely some volume to be picked up on. I expect a little bit of volatility this week um, to to kind of make up for that. So we'll see. But as of right now, you know, looking a little dry on the volume. We we'll expect a pretty volatile week this week to end November. Um, if we do go down to the daily, just kind of looking at this and what what we got going on, we definitely have a bit of a uh, bull gap right over here. Go ahead. and Put this down so we got a nice little bull gap at about four what is it, 441 to 446 ish uh 445.5 so you know gaps to the downside there's a couple of them uh this one being the the most important in my opinion uh, to see continuation for the bulls we probably will need to see this get filled um just based on the recent price action you know a lot of indecisiveness the last couple of days now, to be fair, last week was Thanksgiving. You can see volume was very low, um, but we do see this weird divergence right now where volume is kind of dipping off and price is only going up. Interesting, you know, just something worth noting, uh, as well as the MACD, we do see the daily MACD is way up towards its top area. Uh, could be expected to see a potential pullback, um, possibly even this week. But overall, a lot of indecisive candles, indecisive uh, days, the last couple of days. But again, Thanksgiving usually brings less volume, um, you know, more of range bound motion. If we do go down onto the 30 minute, uh, we can kind of get this range set up. I'm even going to go into the 15 minute as I do prefer that one. I'm not sure why I unstart it. 15 minute wise, you know, you can see we're just kind of trading within this range, it appears. Um, as of right now, from about 454.60 uh, to, to about 455.80. Hello? Um, your, your, your screen is blurry and I can't see. Oh, there we go. Can you see it okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, like I was saying, in the range right now, 455 to, sorry, 455.80. Um, 
down to about 454.60. We've just kind of been trading range bound in this area. Um, so, you know, could be considered some consolidation for another move up, or, uh, you know, we could just be kind of trading in preparation for, I believe, FOMC, um, which is the more likely scenario, in my opinion. But let me just make sure I. Oh, good. Sorry. Um, yeah, we could be just trying kind of trading range bound for FOMC. So kind of just low volume uh, back and forth until we do get a big move out of the range, uh, which will likely push us pretty high if it does go up or pretty low if it does go down. But as of right now, those are the kind of the levels I'm looking at to break. I really want to see us just get out of this range, whether it's to the upside or the downside, before we start playing this. Because otherwise, you'll just get kind of chopped up in this dollar um, range that we're in. So that would be my play here on SPY, at least for the beginning of the week. Monday, Tuesday, I'd be waiting for us to get out of that range at about 455.80 to about 454.60. So that's what I'm seeing there on SPY. Um, again, overall, you know, price action is still very much bullish. So just because we are kind of losing volume doesn't necessarily mean we're going to go down. As you can see, we did a similar action like this for a couple of days before pushing above, and we're just kind of doing the same thing again. So it's not to say this won't continue, but something worth noting. So what what range do you see in between, and what's the um if it would go out, go um above that what four fifty five four fifty six. Yeah, so if we would break out at 455.80 uh, general level right there, obviously we'd be looking at that high of Thursday as our potential target, so the 456.38. Uh, if we do push above 456.38, I would look for that next daily level, which seems to be, I know it's kind of hard to see on my screen here, but 457.62, I believe that says. Um, it was the high from July, um, July of this year. Um, so I would just be looking at generally that level. If we do break out at 456.30, uh, I would like to see that 457 to 458 dollar range get tested. Uh, but once we break, once we hit that area, you want to be really careful because obviously, again, this is a multi-week um, resistance. You know, actually a multi-month resistance. A couple of months that we've kind of we hit that and then got rejected. So we definitely need to see that break before we can even think about all-time highs. Um, but we are we are on the right path, you know. Everything is kind of shaping up to see us possibly go towards highs, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be tomorrow. Could be in a week. Could be in two weeks. Um, what time frame are you looking at? The thirty minute or the five minutes? Right now, I'm on the fifteen minute. Okay. Yeah, I generally when I'm when I'm mapping out levels, I generally yeah. use the fifteen minute and the thirty you minute. Chili. Um, no. Just because yeah, yeah. those are larger levels. Of you ate all this fucking chili. Letting that shit rip over there. Sir, could you uh, could you just mute your mic? Sorry. It's all good. Um, yeah, we'll just mute mics until obviously we have questions, and then at any point when you guys have questions, feel free to chime in. Uh, but yeah, as of right now, that's what I'm looking at on Spy. Does anyone have any questions as far as Spy? Where I'm at right now, what I saw. Uh, James, it's Moin here. Can you hear me? Yep. What's up, bud? I think you need to unshare and share the screen again because it's pretty easy. Is it fuzzy? All right. Yeah. Give me just yeah, a second. Better now. Yes. Yeah. We're good now. We're good now. We're good now. Yeah. It's so go weird. On. Every time I go into Discord, it gets better. Okay. Let's. Uh, everyone, just keep a monitor on that. If it does start to go fuzzy, is it good right now? Yep, go ahead. So strange. Okay, uh, so that's what I see here on the there, guys. Yeah, what's up, man? Uh, what, um, what platform are you using? So this is Weeble. Uh, so a lot oh, of us Weeble. in here, yeah, we trade with Weeble. Um, there are some people that do use Robinhood, which is, you know, not a bad platform, a bad I would say. Platform, I was... But um, I prefer Weeble, and I think most of us prefer Weeble in here. Just for a general, you know, obviously placing the trades on there is what we use it for. And then you can also use TradingView. I think that's another good charting app, depending on how advanced you want to get with it. But Weeble serves the, serves the job, I think. Um, I, Thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm going to move on to the QQQs. 
uh, basically, you know, where a lot of our tech stocks, um, NVIDIA, AMD, Microsoft, etc., tend to live in this ETF. Uh, so any, any movements by them generally are followed through in here. As you can see, you know, on QQQ, we did kind of have a similar formation. Let me get rid of all these lines here. I'll cluster your screens up. We had a, a generally a similar formation, if you will, that SPY had where we were just kind of channeling downward. Price action was moving down um, in this kind of a channel path, channel pattern, sorry. Uh, hit that 200 EMA on the daily, and then we got a nice little boost off of that and uh, ended up breaking above those highs from similar to, to SPY back in July. You know, we had that, that high of about 387.50 now we've already broke above that and gone up to 393 which if you look on the on the weekly time frame here you know that 393 area is basically at the top of all of these candles here way back in uh, December of 2021 so we are kind of already back at those highs again uh, almost the highs of QQQ in general so QQQ is kind of performing really well. I wouldn't say it's outperforming SPY, but it is from a technical standpoint. It has made a much larger move. Um, now on the daily, you know, again, similar situation. We do have that gap, the same gap that we had on SPY from back uh, right here on this one. It would be 378.50 to about 383.20. Um, so we do have that little bit of a bull gap that the bears will aim to push it towards. As of right now, Looks like on, it would have been Tuesday, sorry, Wednesday, we did have a bit of a topping style candle for the daily. So when you have these long wicks, really indecisive body, it means the buyers and sellers were kind of back and forth, not really deciding, uh, but ultimately the sellers got the better of this day. And you can see they continued it the following day on Friday. So I would expect some continuation by the sellers here just to kind of push it down at least a little bit, um, just to reset some of these these smaller time frame. Um, you know, MACDs, etc. But um, overall, if we're looking here on the 15 minute, try and find some levels. Uh, QQQ <laughs> isn't really in a range, I guess you could say, like um, SPY is. I would say QQQ has a little bit more, I guess, movement, if you will. So let me see here. So right now for upside, I'd be looking at this uh, top here around 389.50. So essentially where the market closed, um, sorry, 389.58, my apologies. Wow, the market really didn't move at all yesterday or, or on Friday. Uh, anyways, that 389.58, so basically the intraday top right here. So you see where we had all this price action, move this one. We see where we had all this price action kind of occupying in this space here they couldn't break above that that general level there right around 389.50 and it ended up getting pushed back and rejected as of right now you know holding over our 15 minute 200 ema so good sign there for the buyers uh, but if we do go ahead and lose this 389 dollar level i would expect us to go down and retest those lows of 388.50 if not lower Upside wise, again, if we do break out at 389.50, I do think we have a good shot at going back up towards right around here at about 390 to 390.50 um, before possibly either rejection or continuation. But that's what uh, that's what I'm seeing here on QQQ. Again, overall, you know, the generally the stocks, all these stocks we're gonna be looking at, the overall larger trend is still up. Um, but we are starting to see some lower time frames pulling back. So something, to, something worth noting. Excuse me. What's up? Um, when you when you're doing your review for the next next week mm -hmm. or the next day, actually, because you do it every day. Mm -hmm. When um, what's the time frame? Is you do you look back two days or you look back three days? How much days do you go back? So it all depends. So like for for instance, like what we're doing right now, I do it on the I start on the weekly. I like to look at the bigger picture, look at the weekly, see how we closed out last week's candle. Well, also, you know, considering that it was Thanksgiving week, so the volume is going to be lower. You know, we're not going to have as much price action. But generally, I go on the weekly, and then I move my way in. So probably from weekly 
to daily, see you know how the candles were looking, how the volume was looking, where's my MACD at? Um, and then I'll start moving into more of the micro ones. I wouldn't say micro, but smaller time frames, so 15 minute, 30 minute, um, to see kind of the, the general direction that we're in. Uh, you know, at least for, for what we do here, we trade generally the, you know, the daily, so we day trade. So when I'm, when I'm in the middle of looking, you know, during the day, I'll be switching between probably the five minute and the 15 minute as price is unfolding, you know, use the 15 minute for overall trend during the day and then use the five minute, um, to kind of find my entries, but that's just me. I know that alpha uses the one minute, um, and the five minute, you know, because he does a lot of scalping. So it really comes down to what kind of trader you are. But when we're doing weekly preparations like this, I start on the weekly. Now, if it was like tomorrow, for example, at the end of the day, I'd probably only use really the daily um, and down. But just because we're looking at, you know, the following week, trying to figure out what could, what direction we could be heading in based on the trajectory we've been on, I use the weekly. Hmm. So it's all about multi time frame analysis. You can't when, focus when you, on one. Okay, when you use that um five minute, mm -hmm. each bar will consider five minutes, correct? That is correct. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. So last week was a very uh Friday was a very choppy day for the most part. We had a push down, but then we generally just kinda of chopped around for the better part of looks like uh well, two hours because we actually had a small or a uh, shorter trading day. My question would be then, I don't want to take up everybody's time, but um, What's up? when when you start the bar, so if you look at the um at one thirty at one thirty right, and you say you you bought at the bottom of the bar, and you could just wait five minutes and to see, and and you could watch that bar go up for five minutes and see what the, um the price action is. Sorry, repeat that one more time. You said one thirty. Are you referring to this candle? To the the, yeah, the green the big green one. Oh, right here with the long wick right so you 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 buy at the look at the top and then if you if you buy at the top you once that bar you could watch that same bar for that five minutes to see where the price goes and then you just and you could sell and sell or buy in if you if, if you need to more so that one bar you just keep the eye on yeah so generally like like i'm gonna use a different day for example just because uh we actually closed at one thirty, so I'm not sure this oh, yeah. volume right. here at the end of the day was probably just a really heavy buy or sell order, you know, anticipating what could happen on Monday. So I'll use, let me use Wednesday as an example here, just to, you know, kind of answer your question. So if I'm looking at like the five minute, for example, I'm sorry, James, it's doing it again. Your screen. That's all good. Let me go back in here. I'm gonna try unsharing guys, and then we'll go back into it. Give me a sec. All right, guys. Everyone see the screen, okay? Yes. All right. Let's see. Let's see if this holds up. Maybe it was just a, a bad share. All right. So if we're looking at, let's just say for example, the beginning of the day here, okay? So five minute time frame. Beginning of the day, we had the huge push up. So we have the nice green candle, with good volume because it's the first five minutes. The second candle, you know, we still have good volume. Now it's it's about half or a little over half the previous volume bar, but again that's that's natural. You know, as the as the morning goes on, you lose a little bit of volume. You have a peak. You push up again, etc. Anyways, we had that push up, and then right here we had a lot of volume. But what do I see here? I see a wick. You know, whenever you see wicks, um, to you know when it's from the the upside to the downside like this, you know this it's showing you a sign that maybe the sellers are starting to accumulate. When they can close a five minute candle out like this, now it's not a red candle, but you can see that they obviously pushed back. They gave some good resistance there. So what that tells me is that the sellers are starting to accumulate, which means we could have a pullback. Now, I, did, I wouldn't have expected this hard of a pullback, you know, maybe a little bit half that move. But again, this would have been your signal right here to potentially look into a sell order. Um, and the reason why is because this is a whole five minute candle. This is a five minute accumulation that the sellers won. You know, the sellers won this candle. So when you're looking at the next candle, you know, you could, like you said, you could enter for a put, you know, to the downside. And it works out this time. 
Now, you obviously have to keep in consideration your EMAs, but this would have been a nice signal. Now, this comes down to just knowing the candles and knowing, you know, as far as being able to read a candle. Why does it close the way it does? And we do have false readings. You know, like for example, this one when it pushed down, this candle right here, you know, with this nice lower wick would have told me that, you know, buyers are stepping in, which they definitely did, but they didn't step in enough. You know, we had a selling candle with a good volume. The buyers bought it up, but I would have really liked to see at least the same amount of volume, if not a little more on this candle. You know, now not to say that this couldn't have reversed, but the buyers just didn't step in heavy enough right there. So at the 60 EMA on the five minute, they stepped up, they pushed it back up to the 20 EMA, but once we were underneath the 20 EMA on the five minute, the sellers were starting to put gas or starting to put bed, put metal pedal to the metal, metal to the whatever it is, you know. <laughs> um, but anyways, you know, we tested that 20 EMA again and the sellers took it over and they pushed it right through the 60. Now the 200 EMA, this is one that you guys should all have on your charts. It's a very powerful indicator, especially on the five minute. Generally, this 200 EMA, if it gets pushed down on by sellers from the buyer's side, so if, if price action is over top of the 200 EMA, and, but it gets pushed down towards it, usually there's a good chance that we will get a bounce, at least a small bounce. Now, I'm not saying we're going to bounce back to highs. We'll get a little bounce, a relief bounce. Now, if they bounce it and then the sellers still start coming in with volume, if we see that seller volume still accumulating, then we can expect that maybe that 200 EMA is going to break. When the 200 EMA breaks, it provides you know a big move to the downside or the upside, depending on, again, if price action is over it and it pushes through, or if price action is under it and it pushes uh, over it. So... I know that was kind of a long-winded way of answering your question, um, but yes, you know, generally I, I do use the five-minute. Sometimes I personally it will go down even onto the three-minute, um, just because I, I like the price action here. Sometimes it's it's very easy to read, in my opinion. Yes, uh, I see that too. Because I was going to ask that question. That three-minute does look better for me to use because it's more it's clearer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can, you know, you switch between and use the ones that you feel confident in. Like, I, I use the three-minute often, I will say, but I recommend the one-minute and the five-minute. You know, if you don't really know the three-minute, it's just, it's a little bit different, you know? Like, you could have gotten probably a better entry on that uh -huh. one that we were looking at on the three-minute right here, because you would have saw right here with the rejection, and then you could have entered on that first initial candle if we broke the low. I wouldn't enter this next candle, you know, when we see something like this, don't just blindly enter the next candle. We want to see a break of the of this candle's low to, to signal that sellers are really stepping in. If we get this kind of a candle where it already looks like sellers are pushing the price down, but then we get a candle right here that kind of stays within it, inside, that's not a breakdown to me or, or even a potential reversal. I want to see clear that this next candle breaks that low. Once it breaks the low, then you can hop in. So you hop in at that low break, which would have been, you know, about 390.250, and you could have rode that down, you know, through the 60 EMA on the, on the uh, three minute, and then down to the 20. Even if you took profits at the 20 EMA right here, you know, when we came down to test it on puts, you would have made all that money from 392.50 down to 391.30. That's a whole dollar drop. You know, on, on options, that's a pretty big, pretty big move. So it really comes down to honestly, if you guys don't know your candles, don't know like, you know, what each candle tells you, why, why is this big candle right here, this big red candle with volume so significant? You know, if you don't know why, then you guys definitely need to do a little bit of search on that. You know, look into the candles, uh, learn them, learn each candle tells a story. You know, this tells a story as far as buyers opened it right here. They push it up here sellers pushed it all the way down here to this low and then it closed you know right here so it tells me that the sellers took over but yeah sorry i know that was a long way of answering your question but generally yes i will wait for those those candles to close um the the five minute the three minute whichever one it is um before i make my move i will wait to see exactly how it closes because I've seen it before where in the last 10 to 15 seconds of one of these candles closings, the buyers or the sellers will step in really heavy and reverse that candle from what you thought it was going to be. 
you know, in the last 10 seconds, if they would have pushed this all the way back up here to 392.70, then we wouldn't be talking. I'd probably be saying, okay, well, yes, there's a wick. There's a little wick, but the buyers would have pushed it up enough to show me that there's still strength there. All right. Hopefully that, uh, I know that was a lot of kind of walking around your question, but I hope, I hope I answered it okay for you. Yes, sir. All right. Let me see something here. I feel like I'm getting messages. I'm not sure if that's just alpha. Yeah, that's alpha. All right. Let me look at, um, let me look at Tesla here real quick, guys. Let's check out Tesla. All right. So Tesla, if we go out here on the weekly, again, let me get rid of some of my, my lines here. All right, so Tesla, as you can kind of see, like I have mapped out here a little bit, um, it's arguably right there. Tesla's weekly has a really interesting setup because it's done this multiple times before. I, I've talked about this before with like AMD um, you know, similar patterns that, that these stocks have that end up playing through again and again and again. Um, you know, it's, it's stuff to watch out for. So again, Tesla way back here formed this little bull flag. All right. So back from about January, 2023, and then it consolidated all the way down until about May, uh, just about June, 2023. And then we had the, the big move, you know, we broke out of this trend line this upper trend line and we pushed. Same thing is happening again right now before our eyes. It's a much bigger flag that's forming, which to me tells me there's gonna be a much bigger move uh, when it does eventually break. Now, it's still in the consolidation phase. We are still just kind of pushing around, you know, slowly making lower highs and lower lows overall. So, you know, overall you can consider this bearish, but again, it's that consolidation that we did over here before. You know, we had the tap, the bounce, the bounce, the bounce, and then we broke. We have that that tap, the bounce, the bounce, the bounce, and then we're coming up on that key spot again where we could potentially see a break. So something worth noting for the upside, I've been seeing a lot of upside flow come in for Tesla uh, as far as for options. You know, we have that unusual whales tab. You can see that for free, um, courtesy of our Discord. Something worth watching whenever you see, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars worth of flow come in on a Tesla option, it's something worth watching. But, anyways, overall, uh, Tesla weekly wise, we are over the 60 EMA, we're over the 20 EMA, we're holding, we're not comfortably holding yet, but we are holding on a weekly time frame. Now, daily wise, <clears throat> again, just kind of this chop, if you will, but we are holding over the 200 EMA and over the 20 EMA. And we're right on that line at 60. So I think this week, specifically Monday and Tuesday, is going to be very crucial for Tesla to figure out its direction for the foreseeable future, at least for the next you know week or so, I would think. Um, you know, Fridays, high and low, to me, are, are super important. So that 15-minute time frame that we were talking about, I would go on the 15-minute here for Tesla, and I'd be looking at the high. I want to see the high of Friday. So there's two... 3875 I want to see that break if we get that break we should be able to push back up towards this 244 high or 243.50 high <clears throat> from about Wednesday Tuesday downside wise obviously the opposite of what we're looking for the upside which is the the high of day on Friday I'm gonna be looking at the low of day on Friday so the low of day on Friday is about 232.30 if we can break that we do have a pretty decent support down there, but I think if we push down here once more, there's a good chance we get that break to the downside. So let's zoom out here a little bit on the 30 minute. Generally, Tesla over the last, uh, I think two weeks or so, week, week and a half, has been within this, this general range. You know, it's about 232, um, yeah, we'll say about 232 to about 230, basically 240. We've been in this range, just kind of chop, chop, a false breakout, push back down, chop, chop. So this thing is coiling down for something. I don't know if it's going to necessarily be that move out of that weekly time frame um, this week or that weekly channel this week flag. 
but it could be something worth watching in the near future. But um, yeah, Tesla wise, like I said, levels that I would be looking at here, 238.75, high of Friday. I wanna see that break. And then same thing with the downside, uh, 232. Now those are our big breaks. Obviously, if we're looking at more intraday levels, you know, spots to watch for some volatility to kick in, I would say that you're looking at about 236.60. I think that this was a previous resistance that we tapped on and then broke out of. And then we actually came down and held it as a support momentarily before pushing back down through it. So as far as short term, so like, you know, come tomorrow morning, I would be looking at that 236.60 level. If you're really watching that level for a break, if it does push through it, I'd be looking for that high of Friday and then more. Downside, we're kind of already sitting on the support that I would be watching for, but that's about 235. I think if 235 gets lost, there's a good chance we do go back down to 232. Um, so those are those are my levels that I'm kind of watching for intraday as well as long term, you know, for the week for the daily here on Tesla. Uh, but overall, I do I do like this one. I think that it's doing exactly what it's done in the past. Um, if we go back to exactly what it did before, it, it did exactly that gap down just like we had a gap down here not too long ago, followed by a push down and then a little, it looks like an inverse head and shoulders down there. It's hard to see, but essentially a shoulder, a head, a shoulder, a break, a pull back, and then continuation. Excuse me. What's up? You say, you say, um, you see a 236.60, um, um, which cause I have my VWAP, my EMA, but none of them show 236.60s. Is this 23644, 23676, 23613? Mm-hmm. So yeah. every, I guess every every um platform have a little slight difference. Well, every every platform has a slight difference, but also you gotta you gotta remember I'm not basing this off of an EMA though. Um this is oh, okay. this is based off of strictly a level. So a level that I can see here where price action pushed up towards that two thirty six sixty. So right here. We had the high on this 15 minute candle was 236.58 actually. But I went to 236.60 because again, we had that push there. That's a 15 minute candle. So another 15 minute candle next to it. We had a rejection from that spot. It pushed down. And then when we finally broke that 236.60 before, we pushed up $2, you know, in a matter of 20 to 30 minutes. Same thing with to the downside. 236.60 when we pushed down towards it we held it for a support briefly bounced and then you can see when we actually broke it we had another big move you know pushing from that 236.60 down to 235 so another dollar 60 move so that level obviously holds a good bit of weight um in terms of for tesla so that's that's the only reason why i picked that level it's just from from past price action reactions on that area that's what i'm basing it off of so you say if it, if it goes to 236.60, then you could go calls? If it breaks that 236.60, yes. It's got to break it. So you see how these these levels here or these uh, candles here rejected because they pushed on it, but they got wicked down. We pushed on it right here, and then we got actually pushed down. So I want to see – I would like to see a five-minute break, but you could arguably even use um, – depending on what time of day it is. So like if it's in the morning first thing – like if we're talking first five minutes of the day, it goes up and it pushes 236.60. I'd be willing to bet that there's a good chance that it's probably going to push it pretty heavily. Now, again, I don't know if you guys have watched uh, Alpha's video as far as for watching for fake outs on the breakouts, but that's a good video to watch because it'll show you when you're looking on the one minute time frame how to not get faked out. So when you get a, a push up, you don't want to see you know, a candle right after it, like this. For example, we pushed up on that level at 236.60, and then we got this almost inside candle. So we had a candle next to it that didn't go up or down, and it closed red. Now the following candle, a lot of people probably took calls right here, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I would say that it, it kind of gave the signs like it wanted to go up, but you can see that when we had that volume push here on this candle, Look at the volume. So we had a nice green volume push. 
And then this inside candle, we have the same exact volume. So the, the larger volume we brought with this one, we have the same exact volume, but we closed it red. So to me, that shows me that the sellers are showing their presence there. Doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get a huge pullback, but it could mean that we might just stagnate here for a minute before buyers step back in and retake control. So you got to watch that. Um, he does have a fake out video to watch out for, you know, not getting faked out on these kinds of plays that I highly recommend you guys watching if you didn't get a chance to. Um, but that'll help you as far as in the morning time and really any time for these, not, these uh, large caps when you're watching them on the one minute to not get faked out. Um, the way that I do it to not get faked out is that I use the three minute time frame because the three minute time frame tells me a little bit more because it groups three of those one minute candles into one. So I can see that clearly, you know, on that exact candle, we had good volume push up, but we did get that rejection. You know, the seller stepped in here. We got a wick down, very small body pushing to the downside. And you can see that right after that, the next 15 to 30 minutes, we did just push down, you know? Um, now, if I would have saw example right here, this is a three minute candle on that same level. We have a solid green body with volume. We pushed above and we closed this candle, this three minute candle, we closed it above that 260 level. That was a previous resistance. Once we close that candle above there, that's a sign to me because it's a three minute candle we close that three minute candle above our resistance level. So that's a good opportunity right there to go ahead and buy in. And as you can see, right after that, we got that move. So I personally, I use the three minute candles because I do like them. I think that they offer a little bit more information within each candle, but it all depends again on your trading style. If you're sitting in front of your computer and you have time, I recommend the one minute because you can see everything in the moment as it happens. But if you're like me and you have a job uh, and you can kind of just look at it from a more broader perspective, three minute, five minute, 15 minute, that's what I use. So hopefully that helped. Yes, um, it does. Good. Let's go ahead. Um, I'll take a couple of, just cause we're, we're at 8.05 right now, I've got about Probably another 15 20 minutes for you guys i'll go ahead and take a couple of stock examples um if anyone wants me to look at something preferably not something we've looked at you know every single week just some new stuff uh or some large caps so go ahead the floor is yours guys if you want to throw some names out can you take walmart yep let me check walmart say walmart oh. all right so walmart just came off of um not last week, but the week before, had a earnings report. Um, obviously, the reaction to the earnings was not that great. Uh, that weekly candle did push down. Buyers did step up pretty well this last week. Volume wasn't it, um, but the way that they closed it, I do like this at the bottom of a push like this. I like to see when buyers can accumulate, um, recover from a new low, and then close a weekly candle green. Shows some, some good strength. You can see if we go in on the daily that we did go and touch that 200 EMA. And like I said before, the 200 EMA, whether no matter what time frame you're looking at it on, you know, weekly, daily, hourly, 30, five minute, one minute, that EMA offers a lot of um, bounce opportunities typically. As you can see, we did get that bounce off of it before and we pushed to the new all time highs. You know, we had steadily been bouncing off of it, I believe. So, same thing here we're bouncing off that 200 ema right now overall the trend is down now this does show opportunity for potential bounce i don't know if it's going to go back up and fill this gap per se but it could go back up to the top of this gap uh or sorry the bottom of this gap at about 159.50 that's where we have this wick from the earnings day when we push down i say right now we have an opportunity if we can break over a couple of key levels to go back up and possibly test um, to go into the gap a little bit. Now, obviously, as we go down, or as the days go on, I mean, this 200 EMA and this 60 EMA are going to slowly start to curve down to the point where they might actually be lower than this level. So I would say overall, upside long term, use this 20 EMA and the 60 EMA as your resistance because it's going to swoop down, it's going to curve down. 
I would say that's going to be a nice resistance area. Uh, if we're looking at just intraday levels for Walmart, 15 minute wise, again, I like to look at that one. Um, we are starting to push above the 200 EMA. So we're getting a nice push above it. I would like to see price action maintain this general spot uh, for us to continue higher. So I'd like to see us break the high of day on Friday the 156.26. If we can break that level, I do believe we have a little bit of range, at least up towards 157, if not, you know, back up towards that 159.50 that we were talking about. So right now I want to see the high of day on Friday get broken. And as far as for downside, I think that the a good spot for a downside break would be about 155.60. And I find this level, again, just looking at a previous level that was broken over for resistance, turned into a support. The support here at 155.60 is now the level I would look for for a break to the downside for us to see a big enough move to be able to capitalize on it. And so you should, said 158 what? Uh, so one, you, I'm sorry, for, for upside or downside or both? For the upside. Upside 156.25, the high of Friday. Because I've been watching it. It's bad. Yeah, the high of Friday, want to see that break uh, for some buyer continuation. If you break that 156.25, uh, or sorry, 156.26 level, the next one I'd watch out for is 156.85 which would be the high of uh, Tuesday. And then downside, look for the 155.60. If that breaks, next support would most likely be right at about 155 flat. So that's what I see for Walmart overall. Um, overall, larger trend is slowly starting to push to the downside. Um, if we look at the monthly, I mean, this monthly candle is not looking great. It's kind of looking very rejection like, um, but there's potential on the daily to possibly see a little scalp to the upside. That's what I got on Walmart. <clears throat> Norwegian cruise line and C I think and N C H L and. NCHLNC. Uh, NCLH. LH. There it is. All right. Let's look at this one. Um, all right. So, daily wise, here we'll start on the weekly. Weekly wise, we are trending obviously below our 200, or sorry, 20 MA and our 60 MA. Um, I do see that we recently just bounced, and it looks like. Uh, not that exact support, but generally a spot, an area rather, that we've seen before and we bounced on consistently uh, over the last couple of months slash year. It looks like we're getting that same bounce right now. Uh, so I would be momentarily looking at upside. Daily does look pretty good. Uh, I like the way they gapped up as well as maintain this 20 EMA on the daily. Next target would be that 60 EMA. If we can break the 60 EMA, we have a chance of reversing this um, at least for a push up to that 200 EMA, and we'll see what happens there. As you can see, every time we've tapped it before, you know, we've kind of gotten rejected and then got pushed down the last time. So, you know, it, I, see, I think right now there's an opportunity for upside. Um, definitely, again, just like the other names, we're looking for pretty much the high of data break. Um, now on this one, this one's a little bit different just because it, of these these half days. So I would I would choose this spot right around one or sorry fourteen forty. So generally this pre market area that we were kind of hovering in around fourteen forty got a push, but it was looks like it was a false push as the sellers pushed it right back down, uh, and then we did break that level and push down pretty hard. Uh, once we broke that 1440, we did push all the way down to 1416 before buyers hopped back in. And then same thing at the end of the day, we did go ahead and hit 1440. So 1440 uh, for upside, I'd like to see that break. If 1440 breaks, I think there's a good shot that we can go back towards the high of day, 1470. As far as downside, again, you want to look for that low of day 
break uh, or close to low a day. I'm not going to use that 1416 because by that point you might be buying out of support. I'd rather buy, or sorry, I'd rather sell at this 1423 area, just another spot where price action kind of hovered, just just floated above this region. If we break below that, I think we'll get a nice move to the downside. I was, I'm, I was pretty much on point with yours. Thank good, man. Okay. Oh, that means you're doing it right. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Appreciate that. All right, guys. Who uh, Who's next? What you want to look at? Any stock. Pick a stock. Okay. No stocks? Exxon. Exxon? XOM. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at the uh, weekly, like usual, here, guys. All right. So weekly wise, we did go ahead and start pushing beneath our twenty EMA. We are getting a nice little bounce from the sixty. If I went on the daily, excuse me. Um, another one of those candles like we were talking about earlier. Not a full rejection. Um, I would say this is a, a pretty decent job by the sellers on the daily, at least for Friday, to to go ahead and allow it to push over the 20 EMA, show some strength, and then it got pushed down. Um, so I think one of, one of two things can happen here. It can either break the low of Friday, and likely, if it breaks the low of Friday, continue down towards these lows at about 101, 102. Or... We can go ahead and consolidate, likely stay within this range on Monday, and then possibly push to the upside on Tuesday. Um, but overall, you know, a, a decent rejection by the sellers, you know, on low volume by the buyers, uh, low buyer, low buyers and low sellers. But again, taking this with a grain of salt, just because we did have a half day on Friday, I would say that the buyers most likely will get the better of this move. Um, but let's dive in here just a little bit deeper. So yeah, 15 minute wise, the buyers definitely got the, the push up in the morning and then just kind of consolidated the, for the rest of the day. Um, did get a, a, a little dip, it looks like, once it broke down under uh, 104.75 at the end of the day there. So 104.75, definitely a, a spot to look for. You know, again, a previous level that we pushed right through, got rejected at the top here, 105.47. And then push down, has some support there at 104.76.75 before getting broken down later in the day. So 104.75, I'd say, is a nice level to watch out for. If we do break 104.75, could go see 105.47. If not, push up a little bit harder, um, you know, towards this top here, 106 plus. Uh, downside wise. If I was looking at this one, I'd be really looking at that that uh, 60 EMA right there, which will line up in the morning most likely with where the 200 EMA is going to be at. Um, so I would say generally we'll use this spot right here around 104.30, which is where this wick came down, touched the 60 EMA. Again, I think by morning time, this 200 EMA will have curved over to this area. So basically you'd be using the 200 EMA um tomorrow come tomorrow morning for downside which should line up pretty well with 10430 so yeah 10430 for downside if that does push i think we go down and we see low of pre market on friday at least which is about 1036 um but honestly if we do lose that i think that it'll probably have a bigger flush down most likely to about here 10330 reason i picked that level uh, Tuesday had a push down to that level where we did have a massive push up by the buyers. So a lot of buyers seem to accumulate right here. And then same thing um, where we pushed down pre-market on Wednesday. We followed that with a uh, push into that level rejection, followed by a continuation to push through it, and then it chugged on through. But momentarily, 104.75, 104.76, um, for upside. To potentially test the highs of Friday and then downside 104.32, 104.3, basically the 200 EMA. 
um, for downside towards that 103.6. And again, these are everything I map out, guys, is on the 15 minute time frame uh, when I'm looking at actual levels. Okay. Thank you. No problem. If I may add to that. A and D. may add to that. You can bring up the XLM chart back again. Which one is this again? The XLM chart back again. Yep. Right here. Yeah. So whoever had the question for XOM, one thing you can do as a lead indicator, you could watch the chart for crude oil. Okay. The CL chart matches very closely with the XOM chart. So CL moves very fast. If you look at CL, Okay, you will get a direction for XOM for intraday trade. What is it that you look at again, Thermoin? CL, crude oil. Ah, uh, yes. Wait. Oh, XLE? Um, XL, I think maybe X. Oh, uh, no, C. No. C for Canada, L for Lion. I think that that might just be for the future. Yeah, CL is the crude oil futures. Okay, yeah. So XLM is pretty much in tandem with it. I'm not sure in Weibo whether you guys get secrets there. No. So CL. So what he's referring to, um, crude oil. It's not on Weibo. We can't see crude oil on Weibo that I'm aware of. Um, what about AMD? Yep, I can look into that. Give me one second here. But yeah, ba basically the um, the CL that he's talking about, you'd have to view that on Trading View. But it's crude oil. So essentially, Exxon. Obviously, it's it's you know oil. Um, or, or is it oil or gasoline? I get confused with this one. But anyways, oh, that's all petroleum. I was gonna okay. say it's, it's all, all like, yeah. yeah, it's petroleum all correlated related. together. So essentially, if you want to follow generally the path of where Exxon um, might go, I would look at Trading View. Trading View, the other charting app we were talking about. It's set up just like this, but you can actually look up like CL. And CL will be the crude oil futures, so you can see kind of the futures, what they look like for gas, etc. Oh, um, all right. So that's what he was referring to. And then um, AMD, I did hear someone say something about AMD. Yeah, AMD. <clears throat> all right. Let me get rid of all this. I thought I would delete this last time, but all these are negated. They were possible scenarios I was looking at. All right, um, so here on AMD, over the last couple of weeks, we did have that, that breakout of this pendant that we've been looking at for months. Um, did have that push up. Now, obviously, again, like most stocks, we are getting into that area where we could either see continuation, uh, big continuation of the upside, but we're also in that area where it's likely to see a pullback and, and a very healthy pullback, to be honest. Um, so if I'm looking at AMD right now, obviously the trend is up. Uh, we're over the 20 AMA, we're over the 60. If I dive in just a little bit lower term, um, daily, let's look at the daily, let's see what's going on here. Again, short week, so we only have uh, four candles to work with, uh, and all of them have generally been up, down, up, middle, or sorry, up, up, down, up, and then kind of consolidation. So we stayed within Wednesday's range on Friday. So we got to break out of that range. Um, so the, the this is these are the more easy uh, plays I would say to, to navigate through. You're essentially looking for this resistance right here. Now how I found this resistance, obviously we had a candle right here that we pushed up onto this 122.90. All right, so 122.90 got pushed up here, middle of the day, and it got rejected. So I'm going to back test that. In the morning, you can see that, that general area, generally that spot where we rejected right there was very action uh or sorry a lot of action in there so what time frame you on 15. yeah 15 minute time frame here um and if we look back if we back test this where i put this one right here at this candle the top of this candle if we look back here on wednesday at the end of the day you see how we broke down through that area and we came back up and we actually retested it before continuing down so there's obviously, you know, some buyer seller tension right there. And sellers seem to be getting the better of that spot for the moment. Now, if buyers can get a push back up towards 122.90 one more time, I do think that they'll get a chance to break through it. Um, if they break through it, we will be breaking out of that range. Like I said, we're breaking out of our 
uh, daily range, so Friday's range right here, is basically what we're looking to break. If we break out of that, we have a chance to go back up towards that 124, 125 spot right here. Now if I go back on the 15 minute, now let's look for downside. Downside wise, if I was looking at this, I'd be picking 122 flat. Now the reason I picked 122 flat and I didn't pick these wicks is because I, I was looking at the pre-market action as well. So you can see the pre-market action, again, we pushed up on that 122, got rejected, pushed back to it, broke above it, came back down, used it as a, as a support. Now we're within that range, okay? We've been trading within this range from 122.9, 123, if you will, to 122. We got to break out of that one way or the other to see some action. So I would say right now, 122, we want to see that break down to possibly go down to that 200 EMA here on the 15 minute. And then upside wise, we want to see 122.9, 123 if you want to be safe. We want to see that break for us to potentially go back up and touch. Uh, I would say first target after that break would be about 123.60 and then the top of Friday, or sorry, the top of Wednesday, which is 124.70. So overall, the trend is still up, but again, we are in that kind of danger zone where really anything can happen at this point. It's really going to go day by day. Uh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Order filled. Nice. All right. Um, well, I think, guys, I might go ahead and just end it here. A uh, couple closing words for you guys, because I know that Alpha did update the weekly brief. Um, if you guys don't check out the weekly brief, you really should, just because it can tell you or indicate to you what could be happening uh, come the next week. For example... If we look at the previous week's um, fear to greed, you know, market sentiment indicator, you can see, I know you can't see it on my screen, but if you look in the weekly brief section of our Discord, you can see we slowly went from fear to greed uh, to the upper hand, upper part of greed, if you will. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't go into extreme greed because it's happened plenty of times, but it could be an indication, uh, again, that the pullback is near as we approach that greed area. Another thing to look at, we also have the economic calendar in there, so you can see what market moving um, news pieces uh, will be coming out during the week. So you can stay clear of either swinging contracts, swinging stocks into those, um, or trading during those times if you're not familiar with them. So Monday, tomorrow, we do have new home sales at 10. Um, it could move the market a little bit, at least momentarily. Basically, anything you see on there with um, a red star icon is generally market moving data. Uh, you can now see which one is this again? So if we go on the Discord, if you go to the very mm -hmm. top, uh, it's under market news. And then there's a section called weekly brief. It's right underneath of where Alpha uploads his YouTubes to. Okay. So if you go into weekly brief there, you can see the, the one he just uploaded um, about 30 minutes ago. Uh, and, and then you can see that the, again, Monday we have new home sales, 10 a.m. Tuesday we have consumer confidence, 10 a.m. Wednesday is the bigger one. We do have GDP report as well as the uh, international trading goods. Uh, most, mostly the GDP report I'll be watching there as well as at 1030 the uh, petroleum status report. Thursday we have jobless claims as well as personal incomes and outlays. That might be a good one. And then Friday, we do a PMI, ISM, and construction spending. So we got some good news coming out this week, or, or rather market moving news coming out this week. So definitely make sure you guys are aware of those times. We try to keep you guys updated as well and send out some updates uh, or send out alerts. But generally, make sure you guys keep an eye on that. But ultimately, guys, you know, it's another week, um, another fresh start. So if you guys had a bad week last week, forget about it, move on. It's on to this week now. Um, you know, if, if you did have a bad week last week, maybe size down, maybe go half size this week, you know, so that way we can start to build that confidence back up and then, you know, be able to thrive later on.
But overall, if you guys have any questions, as always, you know, myself, all the alpha traders um, are all here to help. So tag any single one of us, message any single one of us. Um, we're all here to help you guys. Um, and obviously, if you're looking to learn something new outside of just stocks and options, we do have our futures uh, area to look into, as well as you know, sports betting and other stuff. So definitely look around the Discord if you're new here and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions, seriously. But otherwise, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your evening, and we will see you guys first thing in the morning. Thank have you, a good sir. night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. you as well. No problem. Thank you. No problem, guys. Take care tonight. It's a lot of terminology you got to learn. That's the truth. <laughs> it is. <laughs> There's, it's a it's a big learning curve, um, but but you guys will get this. Yeah, thank you. No problem.